Today we'll be preparing tteokbokki, the iconic Korean street food. Tteokbokki features rice cakes coated in a delightful sweet and spicy gochujang marinade. Much like the hot dogs lining the streets of New York, this dish is ubiquitous across the streets of Korea. Despite its popularity locally, it often takes a backseat to more renowned dishes like bulgogi or kimchi jjigae internationally. In this video, I'll guide you through a simple and authentic tteokbokki recipe allowing you to recreate this beloved Korean treat effortlessly. To kick things off, let's craft the sweet and spicy marinade. Gather the following ingredients. Soy sauce, oyster sauce, gochujang, fine Korean chili powder, coarse Korean chili powder, and sugar. If you only have one type of Korean chili powder, no worries. Just use one as a substitute for the other. The oyster sauce and the sugar brings the sweetness while the Korean chili powders and the gochujang brings the spiciness. For the measurements, incorporate 1 tablespoon of fine Korean chili powder and coarse Korean chili powder. Once again, let's say you don't have fine Korean chili powder, then add 2 tablespoons of coarse Korean chili powder instead. Moving on, add one and a half tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of soy sauce, a heaping tablespoon of gochujang, and one tablespoon of oyster sauce. After completing your additions, thoroughly mix the ingredients until they form a cohesive, thick paste. If the mixing proves challenging, you can simplify the process by adding one tablespoon of olive oil at this point. I'll be adding olive oil a little later in the video, but you can add it at this point if the paste is too hard to mix. Next, set your prepared marinade aside and rinse a bunch of green onions under cold water. Typically, one bunch of green onions is ample for a serving size of two. Once the green onions are washed, cut the green onions in half such that the white and green portions are separate. Next, gather the white part of the green onion and cut them into quarters lengthwise. Once they're in these long slivers, cut them into half horizontally. Once that is done, place them into a wide pan where you'll be cooking the tteokbokki. For the green portion of the green onions, we want to cut a portion of them into centimeter chunks. These green onions will be the garnish at the end. It brings a pop of freshness and it looks great since the green really pops when compared to the redness of the tteokbokki. The rest of the green onions can be cut in similar lengths to the white part of the green onion. Shift the pan with the green onions to a burner and set on high heat. Then pour in approximately 2 cups of fish stock or water. Water works perfectly and is likely more authentic as Korean street vendors often offer it to save on margin. However, if you're curious, the fish stock I'm using is a classic Korean blend featuring anchovies, dried mushrooms, and onions. Now it's time to prepare the udeng or fish cakes. These Korean thin fish cakes are what is commonly found in tteokbokki in Korea, but you can really put any type of fish cake. For the fish cakes I have here, I'm cutting them into triangles. Once cut, add them to your pan. Next, add around a tablespoon of minced garlic to the pan. Then add a half tablespoon of sugar. Finally, add a half tablespoon of salt. Then cover the pot and let it boil. As the broth heats up, go ahead and prepare as many hard boiled eggs as you like. Eggs are a classic side that pairs well with rice cakes in tteokbokki. You might have noticed my eggs are brown and that's because I steam them in an instant pot. Simply place the eggs in a steamer basket, add a cup of water, and steam on high for 3 hours. This method results in a superior brown egg that tastes way better than the traditional hard boiled. By now, your broth should be boiling. Open the lid and mix the ingredients. You'll smell that fishiness if you use the fish stock, but this is where all the flavor comes from. Next, if you haven't already, add 1 tablespoon of olive oil. If you don't like the taste of olive oil, go with a more neutral oil like avocado oil. Now, add your rice cakes. Rice cakes are essentially rice that has been pounded until it becomes sticky and doughy. You can typically find rice cakes whether frozen or fresh at your local Asian supermarket. The quantity of rice cakes you add depends on your preference, so feel free to put in as many as you like. It's yeah. worth noting that adding a bit more than you think is fine. This dish tastes even better the next day. Once all of your rice cakes have been added, give it another good stir. 
At this point, you might be questioning whether the contents of the pot resemble topoki at all. However, witness the enchantment unfold as you introduce a generous tablespoon of marinade into the clear broth. Suddenly, a remarkable transformation takes place, and the once clear liquid evolves into a vibrant, deep red hue. Anyways, I recommend starting with a tablespoon, making sure it is thoroughly dissolved into the broth. Taste it, and if it leans towards blandness, feel free to add more marinade. Remember, it's easier to add less seasoning initially than to correct an overly seasoned dish. By the way, if you end up with leftover paste, you can jar it up and store it in your fridge for your next dalpoki adventure. Once you've reached this stage, it's time to introduce the egg into the mix. In my case, I opted to exclude the yolk since I don't like yolk. However, conventionally, the entire egg is added to the topoki. Interestingly, enthusiasts go a step further by incorporating the yolk into the marinade, contributing to a sauce with a more indulgent and thicker consistency. Feel free to experiment and find the variation that suits your palate the best. And that's essentially it. Give it a good stir and let it simmer until it reaches your desired consistency. If you prefer a more soupy texture, that's perfectly fine. Treat it as a spicy soup and savor the rice cake in a spoonful of that sweet and spicy broth. Alternatively, if you lean towards a thicker, saucier consistency, continue to reduce it until you achieve that desired thickness. Adjusting the consistency just allows you to tailor the dish to your own personal tastes. In terms of complementary side dishes, I usually eat it with some frozen mandu. Although, if you're interested in a homemade version of mandu, check out my North Korean style mandu video. Links in the comment section below. Shameless plug aside, look at this dish. A masterpiece of Korean street food. Behold the topoki, a symphony of flavors and textures, glistening rice cakes bathed in a sweet and spicy gochujang embrace, dancing in rich, deep red sauce. Each bite is a journey through the vibrant streets of Seoul. The soft chewiness of the rice cakes, the kick of heat, and the subtle sweetness. It's an experience that transcends the ordinary. But yeah, top it off with some cracked pepper, crushed sesame seeds, and toss on those green onions. Adds a bit more flavor and a nice touch to your topoki. Simple, tasty, and ready to enjoy.